so much stuff going on right now, so many projects that I thought I'd start another one. This is kind of a continuation of the January challenge because I painted these miniatures as part of that. And it also is if I get it done in time, though if I don't, it doesn't matter. It's inspired or prompted by the, a challenge being run uh, by Heroic Highlights on Instagram, which is basically just do any scene from the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit films. And uh, yeah, this is what this is gonna be. So. The idea I've got and what I'm going to be doing is a display base for my barrels out of Bond, which I really want to have looking nice. I'm really pleased with how well they painted up. I'm going to need to do the bases as well as the display base because I'm not going to stick them to it permanently. I'll have holes where the uh, bases will be able to slot into so I'll be able to make use of them and play the game, which I obviously want to as well, the scenario for this. Uh, so yeah, so I'll point the camera down, show you what I've got, what uh, base I've picked out to use, and then we'll get started and see if we can get it done. Now, I've got two weeks until the end of February, just under two weeks, so there's a chance I won't get it finished in time for the actual challenge, but that's not the point. I, I want to do this anyway, so why not be inspired to start by Heroic Highlights. So thanks for the challenge. It's really cool to be involved with it. I'm a bit late starting. It has been going on for six weeks now, <laughs> but I have had too much to do to get, to get a beginning before now. So let's get to the table. So here we are. Here we have all the dwarves and one hobbit. And I'm gonna do it on this base, I think, on this, um, this deep picture frame. Here are all of the bases that came with these miniatures. So that's what I'm gonna to use to mount these on. And what I'll be doing is I'll be doing the river coming round, probably around a rocky outcrop, maybe twisting a bit. They'll be quite spread out, so it'll be as close as this. So they'll be quite spread out. If I, if I plan this out and realize that I need to use a bigger uh, base, I can do because I have some larger ones of these as well, but I'd like to do it on the smaller one, I think it'd be quite tight. So they'll be kind of going down a river, which is going to be a bit like this, going around corners with rocks and maybe some, um, <clears throat> some branches going over the top, very similar to how you see in the film. So I'll get this out of the single-use plastic, remove everything that's inside, and then I'm going to start to draw out where the river's going to go and start to do the rocky outcrops. Now I'll be using bark and my traditional, um, what I normally do for rocks. Um, the actual water I'm going to do using the... Um, technique with toilet paper. I don't have any resin at the moment in, in the building, so I can't do a resin pour even if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I'm gonna use, um, gonna use uh, toilet paper um, and then silicon for the splashes and maybe a bit of fi hollow fiber as well for spray. Um, so yeah, this is gonna hopefully be quite a quick build. I think the complex part will be doing the actual bases because I'm gonna to need to make the bases match the painting of the river enough that they don't look totally out of place when they're actually in situ. So yeah. I'm getting it myself prepared, get all of that cleaned up and ready, do some drawing, and I'll bring you back when I start to do some modeling. As you can see, I've removed everything from the inside of this frame, which is really cool, and I've had a look at it and I've had a thought, and I think that actually that is just gonna be a little bit too small. I want to do not just the dwarves in their, on their barrels from The Hobbit going down a river, but I'm also thinking about hunter orcs and wood elves and having it as a really kind of dynamic uh, scene. Obviously I never go small do I? Go big or go home. So what I've got is this shelf here. Now where I'm displaying some of my dioramas, I'm building a few on these shelves now so it's going to fit together quite nicely as well. I'll have the Tabletop Dungeoneers post-apocalyptic carve on one of these and um, if I do this diorama, which I'm going to, then that will also fit quite nicely rather than um, them all being odd shapes and sizes. So let's get rid of this. You can go back on the shelf. It will be used for something, I'm sure. It's not going to go to waste. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to plan this out. So I will bring you back when I have done some drawing and done some planning. I know roughly what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to lay it out, make sure I know what I'm doing, and I'll bring you back for the next step. A little quick in progress. What you can see is I've got 14 bases, which is what these barrel riders sit on. And I'm very pleased that I went for the larger base. I think that the smaller one uh, would have been way too small. So what I'm doing is I'm working out roughly where I want these to sit, where the actual river's gonna go. And then I will cut out a through this base for each of, the, of these bases so that the model can sit in and be taken out. Once that's done, I will glue this down. I'll bring you back for when I come to the cutting, but for now, it's a case of looking at it, moving things around, and then I will start to draw and make sure that I remember where I want things to go. So I'll bring you back when I get to the cutting stage. So I've worked out where I want things to sit. So now what I'm doing is I've come along, I've just got this kind of like sharp metal tool, and what I'm doing is I'm just tracing around each of these bases 
just like that so that then when I move the base I know where it was um, and I've done a few and I'm going to continue doing that um, and then I'll come to cut it out so that's how I'm going first of all mark then I can remove uh, I can move everything away and I'll be able to cut things out so I'll bring you back when I get to the cutting all right so that's all drawn around it took me a minute or two of course if you don't have a strange metal implement like I have you can just use a pencil and what I've got here is a sharp hobby knife and I'm cutting it out as you can see with short sharp kind of like chopping motions so I'll get that done and with that done you should be able to just push through if you haven't made any if you've done a good enough job there we are so that just pops out and then we can check to see whether a base sits in it nicely and it does brilliant so i'm going to do the other uh, 13 and um, i'll bring you back when i get to the next step i've cut all them out didn't take me very long so what i'm now going to do is stick that down to the shelf and the first thing that i'll need to do to make sure this does stick right though i am going to be using gator glue so i won't need to do it as much as if i was using pva for example is come along with my wire brush and scratch up the surface so I'll scratch all that up with this wire brush and then I'll put the gator glue on the bottom and then I will attach it to the wooden shelf and then weight it down and leave it for a couple of hours. I'm using the gator glue because I'm in a bit of a hurry on this one and I want to crack on. So this doesn't make a very nice sound as you can hear. So I'll turn the camera off, get that finished, uh, get it glued down and I'll bring you back for the next step very shortly. So what I've done is I have cut out some strips of this two centimeter thick foam. Um, I've got it 60 centimeters long, which is actually just a little bit too long, funnily enough. So these shelves are not quite 60, but that's fine. Um, and I've measured out basically the widest depth here of where I want the bank to be and made them a little bit bigger. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to sketch roughly that onto this and then build up the bank separately to this. I'm not gonna glue this straight down onto the base. I'm not gonna glue that straight down onto the base. I'm gonna build the banks up separately so I can sculpt them and do all the carving and all the rocks that I need to. And then when I'm done, then I will glue them to the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. I will be using this foam because it's harder and I can actually carve it nicely with a knife to get rock faces in it rather than the white foam, which is just bobbly and horrible. So yeah. I'm going to crack on with this and I'll bring you back when I come to the next step. The first layer of gluing is set and I've started to make um, for the back of it to make some slightly higher sections as I've said cutting out some more XPS as you can see however I think the front is pretty much the height I want it to so what I'm going to start to do now is come along with my knife and just pick away at the XPS to make a nice rock shape like a uh, which is similar to how it is in the films so i'll just be doing this very quickly it doesn't take very long as you can see i won't film it all because it's a nasty sound it makes a right mess so i'm going to be doing it as quick as possible so i can tidy it up but what that will then mean is when i come along with my next stage uh, i will have the texture there which i can then work with um, with my texture paint <clears throat> so yeah just gouging and tearing basically it's a nice simple technique so i'll bring you back when i've done that um, show you what the elevation is going to look like at the back as well because i'm just working on that and then uh, we will look to actually glue down and um, i'm going to put some rocks in the river so i will also be getting some xps and sticking those in to build around so uh, so yeah so i'll come back when that's all ready to be stuck down or maybe once it's been stuck down and show you the next step as you can see, this is now all glued down and it's ready for painting. So I've got some just normal black house paint here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an all over coat, all over the whole of it with the black paint. <clears throat> and then after I've done that, I'll probably come back in with some texture. But this is all about sealing, sealing the foam. There's no PVA mix with this. It is neat black paint because I am gonna do another coat so I'm just going to get that done. It won't take me very long. Um, I won't film it because it's, well, I'm painting it. You've seen that before. Um, but yeah, that's the next step on this. I'm flying through this. I've got another week to finish it and let's see whether I can achieve it.
This dried really quickly, but it was late last night, so I didn't do any more. So the next step I'm going to do now is I'm going to come along and I'm going to apply some black grout and sand mix. I'm actually going to use sand. I want it to be quite rough. Um, the black has done a good covering, but there are quite a few places I can see where it hasn't quite done enough. I'm only going to do the foam. I'm not going to do the base of the river. Uh, because that will be done with the toilet paper method for doing um, choppy water. So there's no point in making that more secure because the papier-mâché I use will, will dry really hard. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to mix that up and come and paint it along. I won't film it because, well, it's the same sort of thing. And if you want to know how I do it, then you can check the video description and you'll see a link to how I make my uh, grout mix. So I'm going to get that done now and then that will go off and then I'll come along and I'll do the dry brushing and I will bring you along to show you that. So this is quite frustrating. This is all now nicely dried but as you can see in the shot there are areas where the XPS is still showing through. And while it probably won't cause a problem long term you can see that there is definitely some green down there which is not really what I want to be having on this build. So what I'm going to do is going to come along with my black terrain paint and I'm going to paint over it again. And I'm going to take advantage of doing this to just touch up along the bed where there's a few bits certainly where I've cut out holes for the bases where it just wasn't done quite right as well the first time. So I'm going to get that done, I won't film it, it's just me painting black. Um, but yeah, a little bit more to do on this. So that extra layer of black did the trick and I'm now happy enough to get started on the dry brushing of the stones. So I have my dark grey and I also have my light grey and I'm going to just do my normal trick here so I'm not going to film much of it. I'll just quickly show you. So we'll do a proper dry, uh, like a heavy overbrush of the darker grey. So that will leave the very deepest parts still black but it's definitely more than a dry brush that I'm going for here as you can see and then when that's dry I will come back and I will do a lighter dry brush of the lighter grey just to pick out the very tops and it's such a quick process as you can see I've almost finished already but I'll stop filming now and I'll get the rest of it done and I'll bring you back when I come in for the lighter dry brush which will be later on this evening probably after the <coughs> this has all gone off and dried such a quick process. I'm going to be substantially pressed, pressed, hard for me to say, to finish this in time, but I'm going to give it a go. And even if I don't, at least I'll be very close. And I wanted the display board anyway, so even if I miss the target for the little challenge, it doesn't matter, it's only an inspiration. So the next step is going to be making use of some of Luke's modeling compound, which I really, really like, as regular viewers will know. And I'm going to be making the actual water layer with this, that's my plan, which could screw up completely and waste all the effort as well. So that's another risk. <laughs> However, the idea is this is going to be quite choppy. So I'm not going to put it on that thick and I don't want to use lots and lots of water effects. So I will end up using water effects on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, <laughs> talking of Luke, I'm actually going to put some blue paint in with the, uh, with, with the uh, water, um, compound um, to, so that it's just like the choppiness and the edges of the waves and what have you that are coming in. Now the water is going to be coming in this direction so I need to bear that in mind when I'm doing this um, <clears throat> and then what I'll be able to do once I've done that is paint it, add some greens and browns and what have you, add some fluff, maybe um, some more water effects as I said on top. The other thing that I'm going to be starting on is I'm going to start to make some trees because I want some trees up here. That's quite important, I think. And I'm going to do those with air dry clay. And I think I'm going to do those in situ. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is do the modeling compound um, on the water. And then I'm going to start to build up the, uh, the trees. So um, I won't run the camera for all of it. I might do a little bit of, a, um, of, of, uh, of the time lapse. But um, yeah, I, I, I might focus in a little bit on how, I, how I'm going to do the actual structure and the, um, and the contours. Uh, but mainly it is just going to be me guessing because this is a new technique for me. I've no idea if it's going to work. So we're going to mix this um, compound up and then get started. So I will zoom the camera in, put some music on and we can see how this goes.
And there we are. That was actually okay. And I'm actually pretty pleased with how it's looking. There's a few bits where I've got the blue on the rock, which I'll be able to touch up. But the choppiness and the action of that water, I'm very, very pleased with. So I can come along with that, dry brush it, add some more colours, and then put the water effects on top with maybe some filament or some, um, uh, like the filler from, a, from an old uh, pillow, um, just to do this froth and spray, and that will look really good. So next up, I'm going to start on the trees. I've had another of my bright ideas, and it might end up being a, a stupid idea. <laughs> So what I've done is I've been up to the hardware shop, our builder's merchant, and confused the hell out of them by buying some of this very expensive quad-core armoured cable, which is very expensive and very, very strong. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this as the core of my trees. So I'm going to cut a length and stick it in and then build up around it with air dry clay. And I've got some thinner armoured here which I will use to do some branches. <clears throat> I'm doing it this way because A, I'm in quite a rush and I haven't got time to do a full twisted core kind of like um, tree with, uh, with thin uh, twisted wires. And also I just want to see whether it works and uh, that's how I am. So what I'm probably going to do is make at least two if not three of these. So I'll have one in the corner coming over here, I'll have one here, one here and one here and what I might do if it works very well is make a second one have it coming across here so kind of hanging over and broken um, so make that one as well so make, a, make a, a fifth one so I'm going to have to get the hacksaw to cut this because it's very very thick I mean you can bend it but barely you're not getting through that with anything other than some serious wire cutters or a hacksaw so I'm going to cut one length of hack to a hack to hacksaw um, and give it a go on that one um, and see how it works and then I'll bring you along for that when I'm working on it because I do like to show my, my stupid. My plan for the, uh, for the thinner armoured which is still nice and solid but it might actually have been a bit thin, I probably should have got a larger one than that but never mind, um, <clears throat> is to glue it to, so dig a hole in this, stick it in there and glue it in with either um, super glue or maybe with the um, with my gator glue, um, which is really solid and dries very hard because I will be building up over this with air dry clay, so it doesn't really matter if it bubbles or what have you. So that's the plan. So I'm going to get the hacksaw, cut some lengths, and I'll bring you along as I start to assemble it. So that cut out pretty successfully. What I'm going to do now, and I've done a little test as you can see. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach these. So I'm going to gouge out a hole and then glue each of these branches in. Um, and they're going to be quite high up. I'm not going to have them very low down. So all I'm doing is I'm coming in very carefully with my knife and cutting out the outer insulation like so. I'm trying to be as careful as possible because I don't want to cut myself. And it does cut quite easily. You get through down to the white and then that can cut out as well and then you'll reach the metal underneath which obviously doesn't cut out. And with that little hole dug you will then have a space where you can put your your branch. This may or may not look very good but it's worth a try. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have maybe two or three branches. I've got one here, I'll have one here. <coughs> I might do like I've kind of done those a little bit opposite each other to make it a bit odd. I might have one kind of a little lower down, down here, and then that'd probably be enough. Um, for the top, I'm just going to have to like wing it, I think. Um, the problem I've got with this is it's very hard for it to, to taper off. Um, so I might just have it so that the, the tree cuts off because it goes out of shot. So um, it's a bit kind of like, you know odd but that's that's also good you know that the river the river cuts off just in shot here the river cuts off here it doesn't continue so why can't the trees cut off so I'm gonna do that um, and I'll bring you back when I come to the gluing what I'm now gonna do is I'm now gonna glue these in place so I've just done a little bit of a test what I've done is I've put some gator glue inside the hole and I'm shoving this branch in like so 
this is a test. So I've got some ideas about how I might wrap wire around the other ones to hold them a little bit more steadily so that I could do more than one at once. But this is a test, so I'm just going to leave it like that, make sure that it will actually uh, adhere and glue properly. Um, I might get a, a clamp on that as well just to hold it in a little bit. Uh, but I'm just like testing live, which is how I rock. Um, so obviously I don't actually have a real idea of how this is going to work. Um, so we'll see if that works and I'll bring you back when I come to the next step, which will be whether it's worked or not. So here is my tree made with the armoured cable. And it has been a, a relative success. However, I am going to bail on it for this project. I'm not going to rush myself on that. I think it's going to take time and I think I'm going to need to think about it a bit more in terms of how I'm going to do the structure. But the actual concept is strong, so I'm happy that I've given it a go. So what I've done is I've gone away um, and these are um, trees or things that I've picked up from outside which um, are um, going to be uh, they're good, good structures for trees. And so I'm just going to make use of these. So I've got a couple there. Um, I've got a lovely gnarled old kind of like stump which I might try and put somewhere and then here I've got a this I've had for ages waiting for the right opportunity and I think this is the right opportunity so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically flock up and stick these in and I think that is going to give me the true structure that I'm looking for for this board I think maybe that one might go there <coughs> and this one might come here and then we'll have that coming across and I might find another smaller one over there um, and I think that's going to be uh, perfectly sufficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in place um, and put a root structure in using the air dry clay, as I suggested I would do. Um, and then I will be looking at building up the rest of the um, of the greenery. Um, and also I'm going to need to do the bases on the on the, on the dwarves. So I'm going to come along now. Um, I've uh, well, probably well, during a um, if I get time during the work today, if I get five minutes at my desk waiting, I'll just stick these all onto the bases and then start on the water effects. I'm not far off finished. There's still a chance I can achieve this. I wouldn't have achieved it if I'd kept going with my experiment. I am going to continue with that experiment at another time. Um, but uh, yeah, I think using, um, using these is a better idea. So yeah, I will get that done. I will bring you along for each of those stages. I just wanted to give a quick update on that. Um, and yeah, let's see whether we can get this finished. So let's plant some trees. So as you can see, I've done one. Um, and I'm going to plant this tree here, just there which is a bit bigger than that one, so it's going to take a little bit more. But basically what I'm doing is, because um, this is just grout at the moment, I've not added any more texture over the top, it is relatively easy for me to dig out a hole with my bradle, or with, if you don't have a bradle, you could use carefully use a knife, a hobby knife. So we make a hole roughly where we want to sit it, like that. <coughs> and then you can push the actual tree in the branch in quite nicely and it will actually hold in place like that let me actually focus a little bit more on on that there so there we are so with that in place and where it wants to be the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come along with some pva fill the hole up with pva basically not very much just a little dollop and then press the tree back in like that and what we'll do is when we come along with the air dry clay to do the roots, then that will add a little bit more kind of like structure and as a support for the tree and it will stay there. So I'll let that dry. Uh, while we're here, we'll glue um, the, um, actually no, we're not gonna glue that one in place, I've just thought, because I'm gonna need to work on the water underneath, aren't I? So we can leave this one to one side for now and then either rest it in place, don't actually bother sticking it down because this is a diorama, so I can do that or maybe I will um, <clears throat> I will stick it in place, I'm not sure. But I won't put that in just yet because I need to either get to the water to do the white water and the, and the water effects and the splashes and also clean up the rocks a bit that have blue on them. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with, the, with the experiment I did with that, uh, with that other tree, but I think that these are definitely going to look better. As you can see, I've started to assemble the, or put together the, the miniatures onto their bases. And what I've done is I've just come along to try to set them into the holes and I've found that there is a little bit of overlap where some of the water effect has actually gotten over the top of the hole, which is not what I want really. I want this to be quite easy to put in and out. 
So I'm going to shout out once again to Quinion from Quinion's Budget Crafts for recommending this Tack Life rotary tool, which is just becoming absolutely staple of my hobbying. And what I'm going to do, I'll put a little sander on it. It's, it I mean, it basically is like a Dremel, but it's just lighter and it doesn't run as fast and it's easier to use. Still use a Dremel all the time, obviously, but for these sorts of things, this is perfect. So I will mute it um, and you can watch, or I'll turn the sound down, you can watch. It's a bit noisy, but I'm just going to come along and I'm going to sand back where the basically paper has gotten over the top of the holes. There we are, I'll do the rest without the camera running, but now you can see that Thorin sits in nicely, whereas before he was struggling to fit, though he was in that one with him. Whatever, he does fit in nicely now. So I'm gonna get the rest of them just quickly sanded out and then I'll run the hoover over the top to get the dust. Um, and yeah, very, very pleased. I'm going to be, uh, I've, I've just, um, just to say about the bases, uh, what I've done is I've just spray painted them, I've primed them um, with an aerosol and then I've just spray painted them with like a light blue and then a turquoise. That's it, um, because I'm going to be doing some water effects on them. So yes, I'll bring you along for that as well, I'll show you how I'm going to base them. These are now dry enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm just going to build up a little bit around the base. Um, and I might do some um, extra wooden bits eventually which might be like brand, like the roots um, so I might actually come along um, go and pick some more of this wood or pick some out of the dried wood that I've got and press it into the top of this but the idea for this will be is I'll be coming along and I'll paint this um, to be brown so I say this all the time when I'm using air dry clay air dry clay is not adhesive so you do need to put a base of PVA down underneath it if you want it to stick to whatever you're pressing it onto and all I'm going to do is very simply just to give it a little bit more support I'm just going to come in and press in around the base like this just so I've got a little mound you can see it is moving so when that's dried that will be much much more secure there we are Okay, so uh, I will do that on all the trees um, and then um, I will bring you back for the next step when that's dried, which will be to start doing the flocking and building up the um, actual, um, the make, making the trees actually have some uh, greenery on them. So there's a couple of things to do next on this. One of them is to work on the water, but the other one is to touch up where the uh, grout has gone a bit off like on these rocks. Now that does mean that I'm going to have to come back in with the um, dry brush again, but that's okay. It's not going to take too long to do that. Um, and the main thing that I'm going to want to do with this is paint over where I've done the um, air dry clay. So I'm going to get that done now. And then when that's done, I'm going to start working on the water, which is the next thing to do. Um, and that's going to involve some dry brushing with various colours, uh, greens and whites and what have you, all that stuff, just to make it um, a bit more watery than just blue, because while water can have a blue element, especially cold water like this, it isn't blue, is it? So we need to touch that up. So I'm going to have to come back with, um, with the dry brush after this, um, which I won't bother filming because it's going to be the same thing. Um, but mainly what we're going to do is we're going to put this texture around the base. Um, and this is learning, building on a learning about from my lake build, that the best way to transition from rock, which is dry brushed with black and greys, to dirt is to not attempt to add a different texture, but just continue dry brushing and it really, really does look nice. So I will dry brush all this the same, blacks, and, and get it down to grey. And then I'll come along with the brown and I'll bring in the brown and the dirt element on top of the black. And then it will really blend and it looks really, really nice. And that's a better way of doing it. <coughs> so there we are. So that's basically touched everything up. I will save this grout mix uh, and come back. And if I need to do another, another coat, I can. Um, but yeah, so I'll let that go off um, and we'll have a look and see what we need to do to make the water look more realistic. And let's see if we can't totally ruin this, <coughs> try to avoid totally ruining this. So what I've done 
um, as you can probably see over on this corner, is I've got my little um, plate of, uh, uh, for mixing on. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making up a couple of different tones of light green and light blues um, go into white. Um, and then I'm going to come along with a different brush to this one that I'm mixing with. And I'm going to pick these up and dry brush them in. So that's the idea. So we're just going to make some interesting tones, getting stronger blues over here, stronger greens over here, and go to pure white at one end. And that's going to be put down onto this, onto the water. So <clears throat> I'll pop some music on and you can watch as I go. I really like using real materials like branches, but this is very, very delicate. And so this could not work. <clears throat> so what I'm doing, I just want to play around. This is a, actually for, um, I, th I think it's for plastering. I think it's a, for roughing up and applying texture to plastering. And it's a really strong, good green mesh, which as you can see, can be set onto the tree and I think it looks okay. And I think that with the spritz <coughs> of some glue and some extra flock on that after it's dried, I think it will look really, really nice. So all I'm doing is I'm tearing it off in thin strips, as thin as I can get actually. So a bit thinner than that even. There we are. <coughs> and then separating out a little bit. So a little bit like you do when you're working with coconut uh, coir. And then it just sits on. And what I will be doing is, um, I'm just like playing with it at the moment. Um, but what I'll probably do is I'll probably come along and put some PVA in and then press it on and it will probably leave it overnight or for, for a little while to, to dry. And then I'll come along and do the, the final touches. But I think that is going to be enough for what I want. It uh, certainly looks like dense foliage to me. Um, <clears throat> I need to do a little bit lower, but I think that th that's not far off how I want it to look. So I'm going to do that on all the trees and I'll bring you back and show you the next step when I get to it. So I made a start using PVA and it just didn't work. So I've had to sadly rely on hot glue, which I don't like, but it is what it is. The problem was that the PVA is just not going to um, set fast enough for it to hold, um, whereas the hot glue, as annoying as it is, does set fast enough and does hold. So I'm just going along now very, very carefully with the hot glue gun and sticking them on. And I have my bin right down here, <laughs> right, right down here next to me, um, so that when I get all the stringiness on my hands, I can get rid of it straight in the bin and it's not cluttering up the, uh, the build. But this is not gonna be a quick process. So I'm gonna carry on, I'm gonna try and get this tree done tonight. I wanted to be in bed ages ago, but hey, um, I'd wanna get this done. So I'm gonna get this tree done tonight and then I'll do the other two tomorrow. But because it's been done with the hot glue gun, at least it's gonna be pretty much set straight away and I can come along and I can do the next stage sooner. So I've done the other two trees and I thought I'd quickly show you the technique that I've developed for doing this. So I've got my hot glue gun here and what I'm doing is I'm tearing up the green material which I showed you, which is running out, but that's fine because I'm almost done. And then the big, the big thing that I've worked out is if I apply the hot glue to the green material, it makes it a lot easier to then press in place. Gives you a little bit more working time than panicking about it, dripping off of the branches or what have you. So that's the biggest kind of like change in how I've been working since I've been doing this. I've been learning as I go, as I often do. Um, so yeah, so apply your glue to the material and you'll find that you get that stuck down and able, you're able to position it a lot more accurately. So literally all I'm doing is coming along and doing that and it's working really, really well. So I'll finish this tree up um, and then I'll show you what it looks like and then we're going to be on to uh, doing the groundwork I think. Next up for this I'm going to come along and do the dry brushing so that I can start to do the um, to do the flocking. I'm a little bit behind actually it's looking less likely that I'll finish this on time for various reasons but anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with my brown 
um, and just dry brush in around where I want it to be. Simple as that. So if I wanted to have this be a little bit kind of like dirty rather than rocky, I'll take most of the brown off and come along and do that. And you can see it just gives enough of a colour rather than coming in and painting it or whatever you can then blend it in so that in the center it's very 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 brown and towards the edges it's not and that is a much much more natural look than attempting to add a different texture as you can see so i'm going to do that where i want to have dirt showing through just like this it's quite a heavy dry brush so I'll get this done and then we're going to come along with flocks and with clump foliage and with various other greenery and we're going to make it pop. <clears throat> and if I can get this done for tomorrow then I'll be very very happy because yeah I'd like to finish it in time for the deadline but either way I'm pleased to have done it. For the dwarves on their bases, I'm going for quite a simple basing technique. I have some Liquitex, Liquitex Gloss Gel here, which we didn't focus on, sorry about that. It is Liquitex Gloss Gel. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a kind of wavy pattern on the base. I was thinking about putting some, re um, some other resiny type things on, um, but I just think it's going to overwhelm the miniatures if I do too much. So I think this slightly less overwhelming basing technique is what I think is going to look best for them. And hopefully I'm right. So I'll apply this to all of the bases and then when it's dry I'll come in with a little dry brush just to bring out the peaks and then that should do it and it shouldn't take me very long to do that at all. So yeah, I'm going to put, the, uh, put this on all of the bases and let it dry. So now we come to dressing the build. And I have a load of stuff just in front of this that you can see uh, now. <laughs> so we have a load of tufts, we have some um, clump foliage, both stuff I've bought from Luke, Geek Gaming, and also some homemade stuff. In the back here, I've got the Easter scenery stuff. Like that, which makes really, really good bushes. I also have some more of the foliage that I use on the tree, so I don't think I'm going to use that. I have more um, like scrubbing brushes type things, which I can use as well to do bushes. And I've got a bunch of clumps here, um, and I've got some little flowering bushes, which just push into the, into the XPS, um, and I will then be able to glue them in place, um, or not. Um, it is a diorama, it doesn't need to be as tough as, as anything. I also have some tree canopy foliage sheets from Luke, which is basically reindeer moss, which I can use if I want to. And finally, if I really want to oh, kick it, sorry, if I really want to, I can get the uh, static grass out, but I'm not going to, I don't think. I'm going to just make use of these tufts. So I'm not going to run the camera for this because I'm going to be moving around all the all over the place and uh, it's just going to be a very messy process and it won't be very easy to keep in shot. Uh, but I will bring you back when it's finished so you can see what it looks like. There we are, I think I'm happy with that. I've ummed an over this front left shelf, I left it bare, and as I said it needed a bit of green, which I agreed. I don't know whether I've got a bit over the top, and I might pull some of that off, as you see. Just can put it on elsewhere. <clears throat> I do quite like that being quite bare, but I do also think that having a bit of mossiness does add to it. <clears throat> Excuse me, still got a frog in my throat from that cold. So yeah, so you can see I've used a lot of the Easter uh, uh, greenery, which is cool actually, because I've had that for ages, I've never really used it extensively, but it's worked really, really well for that knotted, mangled, kind of gnarled 
effect that I'm looking for on here. I've also stuck this in, so it's got PVA front and back. Hopefully, it's going to be okay. But this is a t this is a diorama which is going to stay on our shelf. So uh, another benefit. This is very very difficult to get to uh, solidify, and I wouldn't really use it on a gaming piece. I don't think very much because it just falls off. Uh, <coughs> the thing I'm most impressed about, funnily enough, is the trees. They <coughs> they really have just just turned out really well. Let me just quickly change the uh, the angle slightly. I'm just so pleased with how they've come out. Um, they they just look perfect, which is amazing to me because it was a complete and utter fluke. <laughs> but you can't knock that, I suppose. So now we are really, really close. All I'm waiting for now are the miniatures. I've done all the bases on the miniatures apart from a little dry brush. They'll dry tonight and hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to pop them in place and then um, complete this and it will be done on time, which is completely and utterly amazing. I did not expect to do that. And so we are at the final step of this build, which is pretty incredible. Uh, what I've got to do, I've just got some normal white house paint, which possibly isn't the right thing to use, but I've got a little bit of it on the lid, which is my preferred way of accessing paint. It's far less likely to spill and get knocked all over the place when you only have it on the lid. And what I'm going to do is I've just got an old brush and I'm just going to come along and kind of dry brush over the top of the water effects that I've put around the base just to bring out those peaks and to make it look a little bit more white watery. Hopefully it will work. There we are. So just something really, really basic like that. So I'm gonna do that on all these and then I think we're done. I will then do a quick show of what it looks like with the miniatures in place. And there we have it, finished. That's amazing, can't believe I did that in a couple of weeks with everything else that's going on as well. Um, and that's just amazing. Um, I'm really, really pleased. I'm really pleased with how the water came out. I was expecting to spend a lot of time with like silicon and maybe holof holofill fiber and stuff just to get froth and what have you. But that really simple method of doing it with blue paint mixed into the modeling compound and then like greens and blues and whites to do the dry brush and the overbrush has really brought out a maelstrom type of water. I'm going to remember that and use that again. Very, very happy. Let me uh, adjust the camera and zoom right in on it so you can see. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to stop filming in a second because the battery is running out as well. But you can see just what a beautiful result that is. So I'll quickly swap the battery pack and I'll come back and we'll have a look at the undergrowth. The undergrowth has worked really well as well. So let's zoom in on that. You can see it's nice and varied. It's not boring one colour but it also I don't think it's overwhelming. So there's some nice tangles here around where the bro fallen down log is. Then it gets a little bit sparser again until you come to underneath the tree and while we're at it I'm really pleased with how the trees have turned out as well. I think they look really really nice. They've got a nice tone to them, a nice colour, um, and they've got enough variation. I don't think they needed any more than what they did. So now if we come down the front, if this can now please adjust its, there we are, ISO. <laughs> um, you can see that I did put a little bit more on that end rocky section, but not very much, just to give a little bit of colour. And then we have more greenery coming along the front. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just really pleased overall with how the entire diorama looks. It's going to look really really nice as a shelf diorama just outside room 13, which is where it's going to go once I've put the brackets up, and uh, and it shows off those lovely miniatures. Um, and I've really enjoyed the build. So thank you very much, heroic highlights for the uh, inspiration and encouraging me to do a build I've been planning for a while and just well, hadn't got to. Um, I think I'm really pleased with it. So um, I will be putting it into the little challenges running, but I have no expectation of winning anything. There's some superb, fantastic entries. So whenever you're watching this, jump onto Instagram and search for Diorama Comp 2021. I will attempt to remember to put it in the description below so that you can find that um, and have a look at what the entries are because there are some absolute stonkers in there, some very talented people. So there we are. That is the Barrels Out of Bond Diorama done.
Well, there we are, what an epic build. And I did get it done in time, just about, to enter into the little challenge. I didn't win, which I didn't expect to. Uh, the winner was an absolutely epic diorama of Durin's doorway. Go and check out the hashtag, uh, which I will link below if you're interested in seeing that and all the other entries. It was brilliant fun to get it done and to be involved. And thank you again to Heroic Highlights for putting this challenge out there and inspiring me to actually get this diorama done. As you've seen from the pictures, it's big. It barely fits into my huge, huge light box. <laughs> I never thought I'd actually make something too big for that. Uh, but I've tried to get as good pictures as possible, even though you are going to see some of the light box in the background and some of the metal framework and what have you. But I'm very, very happy with how it came out. Let me know below what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I always do reply to all of your comments. And uh, yeah, I do, do love to hear from you. So, uh, so do drop them below. And uh, let me know what you think about that water effect. That was a, probably the thing that I'm most pleased about. Very close second was the how the trees ended up. <laughs> Those are the two things I was most pleased with on this build, I think. So let me know what you think. And I'll wrap up by saying, as I always do, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.